And thanks, Shane. Um, yeah, so we'll move on to the agenda then. We'll start with agenda item one, which is apologies. Um, and just to ask if there are, if any members are aware of any other apologies other than, well, we don't have any, but um, we, we still haven't received an, an official apology from she, from Stuart or Doug. No? That's, that's correct, Chair. Okay. Um, agenda, agenda item number two, declaration of members' interests. Um, if anybody has anything to declare, please do it now. Okay, we'll move on to agenda item three, which is the draft minutes of the meeting held on the 19th of February. Um, minutes of the meeting held on the 19th of February 2020 were agreed under the provisions of standing orders 1159 on the 6th of May 2020. Um, and a link to the agreed minutes is available on page 10 of the meeting pack. So we will move on to agenda item four, which is matters arising. Um, the paper at 4.1, which is pages 8 through to 14 of the members pack, uh, outlines the decisions made under temporary standing order 1159 since the committee last met. Um, so I'm just asking members to note uh, that the decisions will now be fully formally recorded in the minutes of proceedings from today's meeting. Um, and I'm asking members to also note the correspondence at 4.2, which is pages 15 through to 16 of the members pack from the Assembly Commission in response to a letter issued following the meeting on the 19th of February. Um, and this will be addressed at uh, as part of agenda item number seven. Um, also, members will note their correspondence at uh, 4.3, which is page 17 to 18 of the pack, uh, regarding a response to a query uh, members raised at the last meeting in regards to the APG on football. Um, and then we have a one uh, 4.4, page 19 to 22 of the members pack correspondence regarding uh, ho uh, a holding response from uh, TEO on new decade, new approach. So I'm asking members, does anybody have any matters arising from, from those? No, okay. All right, if everybody's okay, uh, we'll move on to the next item of business, uh, which is the all party group update. Um, so this is at uh, pages 24 through to 52 of the members pack, and I'm gonna invite Clarita um, to speak briefly on this item. So if Clarita can be brought into the, the spotlight. Thank you. Go ahead, Clarita. Thank you, Chair, and hello, members. Uh, if I could briefly just take members through the key points in the briefing note, which starts at page 24 of Members Pack. Um, it's really a, a very brief update in relation to any developments in relation to the all-party group since the last formal meeting of the committee way back in February. Firstly, in relation to virtual all-party group meetings, um, once the pandemic really did hit, uh, we got a lot of queries from groups who continued, wanted to continue to meet and hold virtual all party group meetings. So as members will be aware, guidance was agreed and it was published on the committee web pages on the 21st of April. There were also a template all party notice, which was issued and um, that's at page 27 of members pack if you want to have a wee look at that. Um, the guidance and the template was drafted in conjunction with the Assembly's IS office and was based on the use uh, initially in relation to the Microsoft Teams platform. That was the software that was readily available across all Assembly devices. Uh, further to this, uh, there were a number of queries in relation to different meeting platforms and also the ability of external guests to access the virtual meeting. So again, in conjunction with the IS office, some supplementary guidance has been drafted and that's included at Members Pack Appendix C, which um, is at page 25, start to page 25, goes through to page 39 of Members Packs today. There's also a revised all party notice which has been provided at page 40. Also, uh, IS um, drafted up some brief how-to guides, which um, when circulated will provide some handy pieces of advice for um, in relation to the technical as aspect of Microsoft Teams. And that is provided at page 
sorry, Appendix C and D of the of the pack today. Um, further to that, then um, if members agree or happy to agree that today that could be circulated to all all party group chairs and the secretariats, and will also be published on the committee web pages if members are in agreement. Uh, in relation to new party all party groups, I'm sure members will be aware we have been emailing out um, the registration forms for three new groups, parental participation and education, ethnic minority communities and reducing harm relating to gambling. Those new groups were established or approved under the temporary standing order 1159, uh, which has already been discussed under matters arising there, members packs. Um, committee has been um, asked now to consider approval for the establishment of a further new group, Early Education and Childcare, and the registration form um, for that group is included in Appendix E of your briefing note, um, which is at page 49 of your meeting pack. Um, so members are asked now to, to consider approving the formation of this group. Also outlined in paragraph nine of your meeting pack or paragraph nine of the briefing note is consideration in relation to further all party group registration forms, some forms that may be received after today's formal meeting, but before the next scheduled committee meeting, members are asked to agree if that could be decided to put under the standing order 1159. Uh, we are aware of uh, by way of example, the committee offices were of one such application in relation to a new old party group on fair banking and finance. Um, if members are in agreement, this could be decided under standing order 115 after today's meeting. Final issue today is in relation to all party group annual general meetings. They would traditionally be held in around this time of year for many of the current groups. However, with everything going on and um, the current pandemic situation, some groups have expressed difficulty in arranging their AGMs and possible way forward in relation to that is outlined in paragraph 13 of members' packs in relation to um, allowing flexibility. That is all I have to say uh, unless members have any questions in relation to that. Okay, thank you, Corita. Um, Pam, Cameron, Pam, you've got your hand raised there. If Pam could be brought into the spotlight, thank you. Go ahead, Pam. Oh, sorry, get myself unmuted. Um, yeah, thanks very much, Chair. It was just um, a couple of issues there. Um, the APGs, the AGM, and I noted that there was a suggestion that um, extension to uh, the timeline for holding AGMs be possibly September. I was just going to suggest that that's a good idea, but it should maybe be the end of September or even October, but given the, uh, any recess period in between, just to allow people to get those um, undertaken. Um, and apart from the only other issue I had, and I had raised that at a previous meeting was, and I see the, the form for the new APG proposal, um, around the designations, I'd raised the designation issue before because it does still say on that form that's been filled out uh, in brackets, parties from all three designations must be represented. And I had asked for clarity around that because if you look at that particular form that we have in front of us this time, you've got any amount of um, variations of designations, but you don't have the three um, traditional designations Um included within that form, whereas I think the other uh, forms did have unionist, um, nationalist and other included, and I don't think you have in this one. I'm just wondering, is that an issue? Will that be a problem? Thanks, Pam. Clarita, can I just bring Clarita back in there, maybe just to address some of those issues? If Pam could be put in the audience and then Clarita brought back in, please. I think that's me now, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Just in relation to the the first point, um, Pam made there about the the time period, um, uh, just it, it's entirely it's uh, we had just made that suggestion about the end of September in light of 
perhaps the comparative aspect in Scotland and Wales. Um, Scotland, they offer a, a period of between 11 and 13 months. So it's, it's entirely for members to, to agree that. Um, in relation to the designation issue, um, Shane, do you want to? Yeah, uh, one, yeah one approach, you know, if the committee wished to be, be stricter in this would be in, in terms of the registration form, the designation column. Could have um, could include union slash union slash national slash other uh, delete as appropriate, you know, uh, and we could reprint that form if 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 the committee are, are minded to, to, you know, for that to be specified in terms of the the terminology used in standing orders. So that that's that's maybe one way forward. Yeah, I mean, I think that's you know we we have to go with what's in standing orders currently and you know if it's the three designations then you know we need people to as you said delete as, as appropriate chain so Pam you're looking in there is that something you'd be content with yes can you hear me there yeah yes, um, go ahead. I think I mean well I just think we need to decide I mean if if those are the rules that you you have to abide by the three designations then people should be using those designations so I think it's a, a no-brainer and I think um well, I don't know where you go with it with the the form that's currently sitting there, since it's not technically compliant. But I'm sure it could be filled out again, maybe with the with the new form, maybe to assist with that. But I just think it gets a bit it gets a bit silly when you look at the the complete list of of descriptions that are put there because they're not actually the technical designations. Okay, um, so can we? Do we have agreement then that we do we do we put this on hold until we get clarity from the the proposers of the APG um around the filling out of their form? I think that would be appropriate, Chair. Okay, are members in agreement? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. We'll we'll note that, and then if I can just get agreement from members on the other proposals that um, Clarita had had outlined there. So I'll just take them all together. Um, and if, if members have any other issues, they can raise their hand. If not, I'll I'll just assume that we we have agreement. So we're looking agreement from members that the supplementary guidance from the clerk and the information systems office guides on virtual meetings are issued to all APG chairpersons and secretariat and placed online. And that the proposed APG on um, on early education, no, sorry, we're 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 withholding uh, we're withholding that one, aren't we? The early education and childcare till we get clarity yeah, on their form. Yeah, chair, uh, I can I can go back to that uh, proposed group with the with the revised form as as the committee has agreed and asked them to to complete the revised form. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, thank you. So then if the committee continues using temporary standing order 1159 to approve any additional APG registration forms received after today's meeting and before the next scheduled meeting. Um, and that given the current circumstances, the committee offers some flexibility to APGs in relation to, relation to holding their AGMs and electing officers and indicates they hold their AGMs uh, as soon as possible, but no later than the end, the end of September 2020. Um, and we're also in agreement that we should use standing orders 1159 to approve the the fair banking and finance APG. Uh, Pam, you were looking to come in there, Pam? Yes, again, um, yes, that's good, for end of September for the um, AGMs. Uh, and I just want to say, I don't, I don't want to be holding back the new APG because of, of no problem. So maybe that could be, could that be dealt with without... Um, having to wait to the next meeting once you know if the designations are fulfilled the official designations could could we uh, give uh, approval for it i suppose in advance of basically the designations coming back uh, correct yeah yeah chair that the agreement could be understanding order 1159 then and, and be done in writing uh once the revised form is submitted i think it'll be good i just don't want to hold it back Okay, yeah, well, we're, I'm happy to proceed that way if, if, if members are as well. 
Um, Alving, you had your hand up there. Alving could be brought in. Go ahead. Sorry, Chair, that was a big mistake on my part. Okay. If we can take Alving back out. Um, okay, so members are in agreement then. Um, we'll uh, we'll allow the, the that one to proceed. And as uh, suggested by Pam, we can um, accept the amendment to their um, their designation form uh, in, in writing. So we're not holding holding them up until we till this uh, committee meets again. Um, can I just keep reminding members just to keep moving your cursor and um, just to keep your screen live. We don't want anybody um, dropping out. Um, okay, if members are content, then we'll move on to the next item of business, which is item number six. And it's the committee response on the functioning of government miscellaneous provisions bill. Um, so just to give members a bit of um, background in this, uh, the finance committee is, is leading the committee stage scrutiny of the private members bill um, and has asked all other committees, including standards and privileges, for their views on the applicable clauses of the bill um, in accordance with standing order 64A. So if I can refer members to um, item 6.1, which is pages 54 through to 64 of your pack. Um, there, that, that's a copy of the previous committee secretariat paper um, for people's information. Um, so they're also included in your pack as well is the comparative research paper on breaches of the ministerial codes. Um, that's at pages 65 through to 75 of your pack, um, which we agree would be commissioned. Um, the research paper um, informed the questions which the committee posed to the executive office and to the bill sponsor, and that's for, for members to note. Um, so this was initially envisaged that the committee's response to the bill would be agreed without a formal meeting, understanding orders 1159. However, um, the scheduling of a formal meeting today means that the committee could potentially agree um, its response to that today. Um, so that's what we're asking members um, today. Uh, our members contend for us to, to have a discussion on the the clauses that are, um, that you know, that are, appropriate to our committee um, and whether we want to um, establish a consensus on how standards and privileges should respond. Um, so I'm going to open it up to members. Um, there are uh, two uh, possible um, responses included um, for members in your pack uh, and, and we can proceed down that route. Um, but if we have a conversation on it, uh, maybe members, you know, can we might be minded to to maybe add a third there, which could possibly be that we, um, you know, that we withhold judgment today, because I know other committees um, are doing so, are, are doing that as well, um, such as TEO, um, because as the bill sponsor has said himself, this bill will be subject to change. Um, so you know, it, it could be we could be in a situation where we agree to something and then find out that it has sub subsequently been changed uh, by the bill sponsor and then we have to come back and do this all again. So, um, and ultimately we have to remember that standards and privileges, this is not the committee that will be um, ultimately deter uh, be determining um, any official response to this. It will be finance. So with that said, look, I'm going to open it up if people want to indicate if there's any, any comments, any questions um, that they want to, to raise now, please feel free to do so. Okay, I'm going to bring William in there. If William could could be brought into the spotlight, please. That's you, William. Go ahead. Are you on mute, William? William, we can't hear you. Just hold on a, a second. Okay, is that you now? Yeah. Hello. Go ahead, William. You were just on mute there. Okay. We have some concerns around clause five and ten, and uh, two clauses. Um, uh, we would oppose to clause five because we believe that the political agreement, new decade, new approach, does uh, deal with this. And brought, you know, this would unpick a, a party agreement if we if we agreed to clause five. We believe so. We would oppose to clause five. Some issues with clause ten, but uh, similar reasons. However. Uh, Bobby wouldn't be as just as concerned. Uh, we recognise it's probably well intentioned uh, the proposals, but uh, uh, we, we, you know, we do agree that 
um, code of contact conduct like members are required to register their value of benefits and uh, gifts and hospitality. We have no issue with that. Uh, we can support that okay. But just we have some concerns um, around those two clauses in the bill. Okay. Thank you, William. Um, Declan McLear, go ahead. Can you hear me okay, can you? I can hear you. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, Chair, you mentioned uh, a third option there. Um, you spoke out the rationale about the fact that this bill could change anyway. Um, so I think that we should, I think we should consider that third option where follow the same pattern that the TEU committee did as well and just withhold our comments uh, from it at this point. Thank you, Declan. Um, yeah, we, we could do that and, and we could ask that all relevant information that standards and privileges hold in relation to the two clauses is forwarded on to finance um, for them to ultimately adjudicate on. Um, yeah. So is, is anybody else got any comments or anything they want to raise under this item? Okay, so we 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 seem to have we have three proposals really. So we have the two that have been included in your pack, and um, that we either support or oppose clause five and ten, or we have a third option where we withhold our comment uh, at this present moment in time and forward all relevant information to the finance committee. So, just in light of what William has said, I'm gonna I'm I'm gonna throw out option three. Um, and suggest that maybe that that's a better road for the committee to, to go down, so that we don't make any determination. Because we, we, I'm not sure how other members are feeling at this moment in time. So, can I suggest that we go with with a, a third option, and that would be that we withhold comment at this moment in time, um, and that we forward all relevant information to the finance committee, because ultimately it will be that committee that is the the decision making committee on this. So, um. I'm going to propose option three if, if members are in agreement with that. If anybody is opposed to that agreement, raise your hand in the participant. William, go ahead, well, William. I, I'm happy enough with that proposal. At the end of the day, as you have said, there could be changes to this from the sponsor. So uh, I suppose it would be, uh, we don't know what changes it will be, so we're better to wait to see what those changes are. Yeah. Okay, thank you, William. So, if if members are content with that proposal, um, I'll just repeat it then, so that the standards and privileges have agreed today that we we aren't going to make any any comment in relation to the clauses today, and um, we're going to withhold our, our comment, and we will, though, however, um, in order to be as helpful as we can be, to forward all relevant information that the committee holds in relation to clauses five and ten to the finance committee. Chair. Um, Go ahead, just Jim. in terms of the chair, in terms of the draft uh, response at page seventy-seven of members' pack, um, could I just um, be just so I'm clear in terms of the form of words? So, the last paragraph of that uh, of that of the letter, that the last sentence that starts, however, in terms of a response to the finance committee. Mm -hmm. So, would the following? Um, capture the, the, the agreement of the committee in terms of that third approach. So therefore, in, instead of that sentence that, that reads, however, in terms of a response, an alternative sentence reading, therefore, in, in terms of a response to the Finance Committee at its meeting on the 1st of July 2020, the Committee on Standards and Privileges agreed to forward the attached evidence to the committee, to your committee, to inform its forthcoming clause by clause consideration of the bill, full stop. Yes, uh, I'd be happy with that. I see Patsy McGlone has raised his hand. Patsy, if you could just be, Patsy, could be brought into the spotlight. Go ahead, Patsy. Yeah, just thanks very much, Chair. Um, just a couple of things. Well, I would actually be supportive of clause for retention of clause five um, because that has become a bone of contention. But um, there are other issues around there about con conduct within the NSMC and the VIC. Uh, not been subject to investigation. Now, if the Finance Committee is the committee which ultimately is going to be scrutinising this, I'm happy enough to let it move over to the Finance Committee for those issues to be dealt with. But um, uh, I presume you're forwarding just whatever information we have over to the Finance Committee, and that's it, because it, it really isn't the job of this particular committee 
to be doing the scrutiny on it. That's that's what the proposal is. You're you're venturing there. Yeah. So I mean, ultimately, as we said, the finance committee will this bill rests within the finance committee. It's the responsibility of that committee um, to to scrutinise it. Um, they have finance have asked all the other committees for their opinion on it. Um, mm-hmm. Now, some committees, such as TEO, have have withheld comment due to the fact that uh, the bill sponsor himself has yep. said this will be subject to change. Um, so it, in light of that, it's probably difficult for committees to say, look, we are mm-hmm. firmly in favour yeah. of, of this or that because we know it's going to yeah. change. So it's really just for us to say, look, we, we're withholding comment at this time but in order for us to be helpful in order for, in order for us to help the finance mm-hmm. committee and um, come to some sort of um consensus uh, or determination that standards and privileges will cooperate in terms of sending on all relevant documentation information that we currently hold in relation to the two clauses that affect this committee so you know we're not start blocking anything we're, we're trying to be as helpful as, as, as we possibly can and um, in that regard so i'm not, not sure if that clears it up for you a little bit more patsy but it's 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 not reflecting a position by the committee that's what you're yeah. saying yes it's not ref- we're, we're not taking a, a a decision it's not it's not reflecting a decision today but it's you know we are I don't have enough for that it doesn't reflect um an opinion taken by the the committee on it and that the information passes on over uh, because they're clearly, and it's subject to, of course, because as you're saying, the legislation could be amended and it could be amended in such a way as to uh, factor in a role for the, uh, the uh, for this particular committee. So uh, I'm happy enough if we do that with the option to revisit it as and when it becomes relevant for us to do so. Yeah. All right. yep. That's okay. Thank you. Absolutely. Um, okay. Do any other members want to come in at this point? William? Yeah, I just think it's important that if the sponsor does make changes to it, that we have the opportunity to look at those, you know? Yep. And make a decision, yeah. Yep. Okay. Absolutely, yep. Thank you, William. Um, so, with that said, Shane, are you... I think the committee are broadly in agreement that the proposal in terms of the, the response that you read out um, a few minutes ago, uh, that we're happy to proceed... Uh, in that way. So perhaps you could just read it back again just so members can, can be clear as to what we're agreeing to respond with. Okay, Chair. So this is page 77 of Members' Pack. Uh, just the, the last paragraph of the draft letter back to, uh, of response to the Finance Committee. <laughs> so the last sentence, which currently reads, however, in terms of a response to the Finance Committee, um, that would be replaced with a sentence along the following lines. Therefore, in terms of a response to the Finance Committee at its meeting on the 1st of July 2020, the Committee on Standards and Privileges agreed to forward the attached evidence to your committee to inform its forthcoming clause-by-clause consideration of the bill. Full stop. Okay, thank you, Shane. So, just to advise members that the Finance Committee will be advised of Standards and Privileges Committee's position um, accordingly, and the response will be published on the committee's web page. Okay, so if all members are in, in agreement with that, we'll move on to the next item of business. Um, so I want to advise members uh, that in line with established procedures, it's now proposed that we move into closed session to the next agenda item. So can I get agreement that we move into closed session? Thank you. Um, can I just reiterate for the Assembly Broadcasting uh, team that we are now going to go into closed session and just give them a few minutes just to make sure that's, that is actioned. 